So, yeah, here we go again. Mistral's back, finally dropping something new after what honestly feels like forever in AI years. I mean, five months without a headline. That's like a decade with how fast things move now, right? And uh, if you're like me, you probably heard the chatter. Is Mistral still relevant or is it just a EU thing now? With all the noise from China, DeepSeek, Kimi, the whole open source scene, you kind of start to wonder if they're even in the race anymore. Just real quick, I'm Daniel. I've been living in the iOS trenches for um, over eight years now. I started off freelancing, working with clients, figuring out what actually works, and honestly, got tired of the corporate ping pong. But after dub dub 25, I kind of flipped the switch and went all in on solo dev life. Since then, I've crafted over 10 of my own apps, started building in public, and right now, pretty much all my energy is going into Crafters Lab. It isn't just another tutorial site or some AI clone farm. This is my actual home base. It's for solo devs who want to use AI like a real teammate, not like a vending machine. So yeah, I'm keeping it short, but if you want your own solo command center and be part of the crew, that's what Crafters Lab is for. And yeah, if you're still on Patreon, massive thanks. But heads up, everything's moving over to crafterslab.dev. Honestly, if you want to get in and lock your membership before things get busy and before I roll out real pricing, now is the best time to join. For real, come be part of the crew. Okay, let's be honest. For a while, open models were dropping left and right. Every company had a new small, medium, dense, whatever. Then suddenly it's been kind of a drought. Quen kept putting out sizes, but most others went quiet. Even the Phi crew, nothing in ages. So seeing Mistral I roll back in with not just a flagship, but a family of new models that actually feels like a legit breath of fresh air. And here's the thing solo devs need to pay attention to. They're not just giving us big for the blog models. Even their smallest Ministral 3B comes with both base and instruction tuned, plus a reasoning variant. If you've been trying to uh, fine tune, run local, or just get away from vendor lock-in, you know how rare that's getting. It means you can actually test, tweak, or run your own stack instead of being stuck waiting for someone to toss you a new API key or praying your free tier holds up another week. And, and look, I've said it before, the real win for indie devs is having options. Mistral's not just pushing the giant large three, which, yeah, is a beast at 675 billion parameters, way more active than most of the MOEs out there. They're still playing the open game. You can grab the models, experiment, compare, and actually run your own benchmarks. Uh, not just read whatever Ella Marina's top 10 says this week. All right, so you open up their blog or scroll the Hugging Face leaderboard and yeah, you're not seeing Mistral Large 3 sitting at the very top. It's not chasing GPT or Opus 4.5. <laughs> That's not the point, but um, you do see it topping the charts when you filter for Apache 2 or open, or can I actually use this outside a demo? Um, that's where it matters. And for most solo devs, uh, especially if you're running stuff locally, privacy matters, or you just want to avoid the next pricing surprise, this is a big deal. Honestly, I don't build apps just to show off LM Arena rankings. I want to know, can this model keep up in real code gen and real workflows? Does it follow instructions or does it start hallucinating wild stuff halfway through a refactor? Mr. All Large, three lands about where you'd expect. On par with DeepSeek 3.1, close to Kimi K2, sometimes edging out the Kuen big boys. It's not magic, but it's solid. And the smaller models? Ministral 3B and 8B actually hold their own against the last wave of Gemma, Quen, and Phi models. Nothing flashy, but you know what? Sometimes just having a fresh open base to fine tune on or drop into a low cost agent setup, that's the real unlock. Here's my take. Benchmarks are fine, but real solo devs need to run their own tests. Everyone I know in the indie space swaps models in and out all the time. Nobody trusts the default anymore. You need a stack where you can plug in Mistral 3 today, try the Quen update next month and see which one actually helps you ship. The good news? Mistral's making that possible again.
So yeah, here's where it gets interesting for agent workflows. If you're running Claude code, cursor, your own VS fork, or even self-hosting, this drop means a few things. First, Mistral 3 large isn't open, but the new Ministral line is, and that's a huge deal for the indie agent crowd. Every time a new model drops, you can bet there's a weekend of, let's see if this beats my current stack experiments. And this time, you actually get base models and instruction tuned, plus reasoning variants, even in the 3B size. That means you can finally build, tune, or even deploy workflows that don't rely on giant, expensive backends. You want to run a local coding agent, keep your data private, or just save on API credits? Suddenly you've got options again. I've already seen people in the indie space running local test benches, slotting these into their VS code or Claude skills setup and just seeing how it feels. The word so far, not the absolute top, but really competitive. And honestly, the more models you have, the more you can push your agent workflow without getting boxed in. It's not about winning every benchmark. It's about control, cost, and being able to swap tools when the old ones get stale, pricey, or just stop listening. And for me, having more open models, more variants, and actual reasoning versions means I can keep my workflows nimble. If cursor starts getting weird or Claude code hits another pricing shuffle, I can just drop in a new model, rerun my sessions and keep moving. That's how you survive as a solo dev in 2025. So yeah, if you're still here, honestly, you're a legend. I mean, it's kind of wild. Every time there's a new model drop, there's always this rush to declare who won. But honestly, if you're building solo, what matters is having options. Mistral 3 isn't trying to be the absolute king of the leaderboard, but it actually gives us more choices, again, especially if you're tired of being boxed in by whatever tool happens to be trending this week. And honestly, if you're tired of Agent Roulette, switching tools, losing flow, wasting tokens on stuff that just doesn't fit how you build, maybe this is your cue to try something new, or at least go a little deeper. And yeah, check out crafterslab.dev. It's not just some tutorial dump. It's not another um, AI clone farm. It's honestly my home base. I built it for solo devs who treat AI like a real teammate, not just a button you smash when you're stuck. And you know, it's packed. You get full walkthroughs, like actual short video tutorials, notes from the trenches, and yeah, straight up downloadable zips you can drop right into your project. The real magic is in the crew. Members get to actually riff in the comments, ask follow-ups, go back and forth, and yeah, that's just the start. Because the the real core is the the Notion team spaces my live playbook, the real command center, all the dashboards for every app, agent ready dot MD files, every weird prompt library, all the exact systems I use to keep my solo workflow moving with AI. There's a full curated Swift and Swift UI library in there too. Not just random files, but the actual stuff I use to fine tune models and build out my own custom MCPs for Claude code, for cursor, all of it. Um, if you want to get your hands on the resources I actually rely on day to day, it's all sitting there, not just for watching, but for remixing into your own stack. And then of course, there's Ops Lab. That's honestly my favorite part. It's where I build and share all my AI agent systems, Notion templates, the workflows, automations, all wired up and ready for you to copy, tweak, totally break and make your own. The whole point is to keep the indie stack connected so you don't feel like you're building in a silo, even if you're solo at the keyboard. And so, yeah. If you want to get in before it gets busy and prices start moving, now's kind of the sweet spot. The crew's still small, super hands-on, and honestly, it feels way more like a behind-the-scenes dev lounge than some giant, faceless forum would love to see you in there. Swap some stories maybe even learn something from what you're building next. All right, thanks for hanging out with me. Keep crafting, keep shipping. Uh, peace.